Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Robert Singer, Director of Neurovascular Therapeutics in the Section of Neurosurgery at Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center. And on behalf of Dr. Cliff Eske and our entire team, I want to welcome you to this module on arteriovenous malformations. It is our hope that the following information will be helpful to you in understanding your care. You'll have plenty of time to discuss questions during your virtual visit. What is an AVM? An AVM is a congenital blood vessel malformation that develops around eight weeks gestation. Errors in blood vessel formation are believed to be the reason they occur. Arteries and veins are abnormally connected and form a nidus or mass of tangled vessels that can bleed or irritate the brain or spinal cord. This is an illustration of an arteriovenous malformation. Small arteries and veins form a tangle that can bleed and cause irritation to the brain. Arteriovenous malformations are congenital. They affect about a tenth of a percentage of the population. Patients can present with hemorrhage, seizures, progressive deficit, and other disorders. The annual hemorrhage rate with an AVM is 2 to 4 percent. Morbidity and mortality, or harm and death, runs at about 2.8 percent and 0.7 percent. Roughly 90% of AVMs are asymptomatic and found incidentally. The most general symptoms are headache and epilepsy. Other symptoms can include difficulties with movement, vertigo or dizziness, difficulties with speech and communication, difficulties with everyday activities, clumsiness, abnormal sensations, and memory and thought related problems such as confusion, dementia, or hallucinations. Cerebral AVMs can present in a number of ways, hemorrhage, seizure, headache, and progressive neurologic deficit. The decision to treat an AVM is based on its size and location, the overall risk of hemorrhage, the age and health of the patient, the surgical and catheter-based risks in treatment, and patient preference. A commonly used formula to predict lifetime risk of hemorrhage is 105 minus patient age. This percentage is the predicted rate or risk of hemorrhage with an AVM. Also in the decision to treat is a grading scale. Your physician will likely look at the size of the nidus, where it is located, and its venous drainage pattern in order to assess whether or not to proceed with treatment. This illustration demonstrates an MRI scan showing an AVM. The image on the left at 6 o'clock shows the tangle of blood vessels. The image on the right at 3 o'clock shows the same. This slide demonstrates an angiogram, which is often used in order to understand the anatomy of an AVM. The large tangle of blood vessels, or nidus, is easily seen in this image. Treatment of AVMs usually involves more than one type of therapy. Embolization or catheter-based treatment is often recommended, followed by open surgery or radiosurgery. The advantage of having surgery is that the AVM is immediately removed. The disadvantage, of course, it is an open procedure. The advantage of radiosurgery is, is that it is minimally invasive the time to cure, however, can take up to three years. An embolization procedure is where the blood vessels leading to the AVM are blocked. This will diminish the amount of blood flowing to the AVM and can be a very helpful part in achieving a cure. When undergoing an embolization, patients often are admitted the day of the procedure. The time of the procedure is variable but usually around four hours. Patients are typically admitted to the special care unit and their blood pressure is oftentimes lowered after the embolization. Usually patients are hospitalized overnight after embolization and are discharged the next morning. Plans are made for the next round of therapy which can include further embolization, surgery, or radiosurgery depending on the AVM. 
patients admitted for open surgery will usually report the day of the operation, the time of the operation is variable, and an angiogram is often done in the operating room to confirm the AVM has been resected. Patients are typically admitted to the special care unit with blood pressure control. Hospitalization is three to five days. Patients are discharged with a follow-up clinic appointment two weeks for a wound check, and MRIs are oftentimes done between three and six months after the operation. The surgical and catheter-based risks of treatment in AVMs include bleeding, infection, loss of neurologic function, stroke, hydrocephalus or poor circulation of spinal fluid, and death. Our experience is vast at Dartmouth-Hitchcock and we are very comfortable with treatment of AVMs. Again, thank you for watching this video. We hope that it will help you in your understanding of arteriovenous malformations and prepare you for your live visit, which will begin shortly. Please feel free to watch other modules and contact us with any questions or feedback.